Steven, uh, now that you've gone through this whole training camp, was Rory the toughest opponent you've had to strategize for? Uh, definitely, man. I mean, he, he's the best well-rounded fighter that I've faced so far. Um, he's got good uh, technical striking, good wrestling. I mean, fairly similar to George St. Pierre and phenomenal jujitsu. So my goal is to keep it standing on my feet, obviously. I would not want to go down to the ground with this guy. But I've been working really hard on it. And you know what? He's the number one contender and been at the top of the game for a long time for a good reason because he's, he's a good guy. He's a good martial artist, you know what I mean? Good fighter. And I know he was injured, but uh, how much has Chris Weidman helped you in this camp? Oh, man. Tons, tons. You know, our camps were actually overlapping. He was supposed to fight two weeks ago. Uh, didn't happen. Ended up herniating four discs in his back. So, but the early part of my camp, middle part of my camp, I spent a lot of time in New York, and he was helping me out for that. So, thank goodness for uh, for Chris. Stephen, have they given uh, you any uh, word on uh, whether the winner will get a title shot? Um, nothing yet. I haven't heard anything yet. But um, win or lose, me or Rory, they have to give it to us. You know what I mean? This is. I know. I understand that he fought for the title uh, back in July. But, man, like I said, he's been in the top of the game for a long time. So with a, with a good win over Rory, they have to give it to me too. So that's, that's I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Is the whole relationship between you guys kind of overblown going into this? Like, is it annoying being asked about it in every interview, the fact that you trained with them, all that stuff? You, you know, not at all, man. I mean, I, I want everybody to know that we're buds. And, and um, you know, I've known them for a very long time. Of course, it's been years ago since I've been up to TriStar. Uh, I was mostly there for, for George St. Pierre, helping, out, helping, helping him out with his camps. Um, but I found myself learning the jiu-jitsu, learning the wrestling to be a better sparring partner for Chris. So um, I found my, they were kind of my inspiration to actually switch over to mixed martial arts from kickboxing. But um, yeah, man, I'm, we, we have a good relationship. I have done some drilling with, with him before, never really sparred. But um, I'm a totally different fighter than I was then, and I think they know that. They've been watching some film, brought in some karate fighters for me. Uh, to prepare for me, so um, I'm just going to go out there and do my thing. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that. They brought in Raymond Daniels. What do you make of that? Do you think that's a guy who is able to emulate your style in certain ways, or what do you, um, what do certain, you think? Certain ways, yeah. I mean, he is a karate fighter. He's phenomenal. Um, he's very successful in kickboxing, but it is different. You know, it, he's a lot taller, a lot longer than I am. His movement's a little bit different, little things that uh, I do that he doesn't do. So um, there's going to be some differences, but, you know, Rory's bringing him in to get used to the movement. You know what I mean? Uh, it is a different movement, it's in, and it's uh, very frustrating if you've never been uh, standing in front of somebody with that type of movement. So um, they're going to be prepared. It's going to be a tough one. I'm, I'm prepared for a tough, tough fight. So hey, how hard is it to, to face a body in the, the octagon? You know, I was. It kind of sucks. You know, I mean, it, it really does. I mean, I never thought I'd be facing it. I, I, I didn't. But uh, we actually we uh, kind of talked a little bit before we spoke before we announced it in Vegas so they kept us on one side of the room right before we were to walk out kept the other fighters on the other side of the room we waited each other we met in the middle and just started chatting we're like hey man we understand this business and you know we're gonna be friends before and after the fight so he seems to have a lot going on between impending free agency a baby on the way all these things do you do you think that's gonna affect him at all coming into this fight or is it gonna make him more focused you know I'm prepared for the best Rory you know especially after a loss I didn't become the fighter I am after my loss to Matt Brown so I expect him, and that's what I want mentally. I want to be prepared for the best. If I'm thinking, oh, he may, may you know, he may not feel this way. He may, you know, may, may not be the same after that fight with Robbie Lawler. I don't like to think that. I, I'm thinking I'm facing the the toughest Rory McDonald um, Saturday. So uh, to me, I don't think it affects him. We talk a lot about all the different places you've moved around and trained in different places. But Dad has been with you from Jump Street. What's it mean to be on this journey and at this point, always with him, getting to share every moment of it? You know, it's unreal. Um, actually, the very first UFC I saw, I went to, I think it was UFC 3 in Nor uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, where Kimo gets his ponytail pulled out. I'm like, me and me, it was just me and Pops, man. And we were out there hanging out, and I told him, I was like, listen, man, I want to be in the UFC one day. And uh, it took me a while to get here. You know, focused on kickboxing at the time. Uh, but man, it's the journey's been awesome to have him by my side. I mean, what other sons can really actually do that with their father, you know? So it, it definitely means a lot, and um, I know it puts a smile on his face no matter what. How old were you back then? How old was I? I was like 12, maybe? 12 years old, maybe younger? What do you think about the new way in rules tomorrow? You know what? I love it. I love it. I love the fact that we have to come in 8% of what we're going to be weighing. I walk around at 185 now. Learned that after my last fight with uh, Johnny Hendricks, I started made the decision to walk around lighter because I wasn't really sure how my body was going to cope with the new USADA rules, not having the IVs. Um, so I started walking around lighter. I feel great, just as strong as I was at 200. 
or 195, but I feel so much faster. And for us to be able to weigh in earlier, I mean, for us to have to wait all day, you know, sunk down, dehydrated, feeling bad, back's hurting, you know, ears popped, it's, um, it's very uncomfortable. For, for us to actually go in and weigh in and early start rehydrating, people are gonna see better fights. Uh, nobody's gonna have that, you know, that uh, uh, lack of energy because of the weight cut. I think people are gonna be more impressed with the fighters. So what is gonna be your routine from now till noon tomorrow? Till noon tomorrow, well, as soon as we're done here, we're gonna go back. I've actually have the best ladies helping us out, perfecting athletes right here. Uh, preparing all my meals. I've been eating three meals a day, sometimes more, all the way up to this point now, and I'm still dropping weight. And it's healthy stuff, so we're gonna go back, probably get eat, eat some lunch, and start our uh, sweat down. And it's, you're gonna weigh in at night? Are we, we're weighing morning. at night, tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. You're gonna be the first one there? Or? I'm gonna try and be the first one there if I can. Okay. Okay. Steven, we were at the workouts earlier, just before you went out there. Uh, you were shaking hands with the fans. People really seem to like you. This is in Canada. Rory's the, you know, the big superstar. Um, do you feel like you're gonna get booed? I mean, it seems like people are on your side here. They, they really, uh, there, there's no uh, loser in this one, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, man, I, I love Canada. I've been spending a lot of time in Canada. Um, I understand that when I walk out there, they're, they're probably gonna be booing me. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what? I'm out there fighting the best guys in the world. And what better guy, like I said, than Rory McDonald, a good friend of mine. So it doesn't matter. I've fought in many people's backyards, and um, this is definitely his, and we're going to go out there and have some fun Saturday night, so it doesn't bother me one bit. Do you, do you envision any other ending for yourself by, but winning by knockout, or what do you see when you kind of think about, visualize this fight? You know, I always go out there prepared for a five, five and a round war. That's just, mentally, that's just how I look at it. I never go out there looking for the knockout. Um, I've done that in the past in kickboxing, and you know, I've worn myself out trying, and sometimes that can break people mentally. You go out there looking for the knockout, and it doesn't happen. Man, this guy's tough. Why is he still taking these shots? I just let it happen. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, you can't go out there looking for it because you wear yourself out trying. So, Stephen, this is going to be your second five-round fight, uh, and you're not a guy who goes to the decision very often. Does that does that factor in on your strategy, or you need to preserve your cardio or your energy? You know, I, I've been pushing myself really hard, especially, um, and that's something I learned with uh, training with Chris Weidman. He pushes himself so hard. Doing that five five minute round war, making it a grinder, and it gives you the confidence to be able to go. You know what? I can go out there and push myself the entire time, and not have to party. Uh, but you know, there's there's factors that, that that factors that that play out. You know, coming into a new a new place and fighting in front of uh, you know thousands of people. Uh, it can affect you, you know, but I'm going to go out there and do my thing and I'm ready for a five, five minute round one. And this is kind of a classic matchup. You come from a uh, background in traditional martial arts. Roy comes from a background in strictly mixed martial arts. Does that put a kind of a, 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 a special bonus on it for you to be like, you know what, this is two of the most technical guys in two different aspects of the sport, uh, of the sport getting to fight? You know what, that does. It makes it actually excites me. You know, he's a young fighter and he's always evolving. So what excites me the most is, you know, he knows my game, I know his game. I know what he likes to do. I know he, he knows what I like to do. So what new is he bringing? You know, what, what's, what's he gonna bring out there that's, that's new? And, and uh, am I gonna be able to adapt to it? I'm out there. You know, it, it's, there's a lot of variables that, that you have to think about when you're out there fighting. It's not just, people just look at it as just throwing hands and feet. You know, like Neanderthals, just trying to hit each other. And that's, that's not, man, they're, they're strategists. Uh, you gotta have a good strategy when you're out there and be able to adapt when you're out there. A lot, of, a lot of things going on in here as well. And if you got anything new that you're going to surprise us with on Saturday night? Man, you just have to know, tune or? in. You just have to tune in. <laughs> right. You just have to tune in. Stephen, when uh, you're not in the gym with your dad, are you able to sort of separate the coach-dad relationship, or is it always the, always the same relationship? You know, it, we separate it. You know, when, it, when we're in the gym, as soon as we step foot, I know he's the man. And I respect him. I He's trained a lot of fighters, a lot of world champions, so I know he knows what he's doing. And you see other fighters like, you know, Roy Jones Jr., uh, Hayweather, the father-son duos just don't happen. And I think it's because maybe the, the son gets a little big-headed and thinks he knows a little bit more than what Pops knows. My dad's been doing this game for a very long time, and so I listen to him. Outside of that, it's just hangout time. We're, we're you know, just father-son. But we know how to separate. I think that's what helps us uh, get through a lot of these things. Of course, we butt heads every now and then, but all in all, I love the guy, and, and uh, I know he, he wants what's, what's best for me. He looks like you don't want to get on the wrong side of him. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I definitely don't, man. I mean, he, he's a bad dude. I, you know, everybody's like, can you take your dad yet? I'm like, if there's rules, yes. If there's no rules, not a chance.